Cruisers. Welcome back to Vlogtoberfest. How is everybody doing on this beautiful Saturday? It's hot and sunny in California. Went from like 44 degrees this morning at our house to 93. No exaggeration, almost a 50 degree difference. It is crazy. So fun to hang out with all of you in the live chat early today. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you to all of our friends in Canada who are celebrating the Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. It's wonderful to have you here. Now go enjoy some turkey with your families. So wanted to let you guys know today that this episode is sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can find reviews tips and photos from real everyday cruisers as always you can check them out using a link in the description below when we save this to a replay you guys are all probably wondering about the fun thumbnail that we had today and yes to answer your question that is mr cruise tips tv jumping and because we want to actually show you a true clip of him jumping we're going to try to roll that real quick on the camera give it a go mr cruise tips tv See if we can show everybody on camera. Yeah. Is it working? <laughs> Did it work? Yay! So yes, that is uh, Mr. Cruise Tips TV jumping. That was on our first vlogging cruise. That was on Carnival Imagination last September, I think. We had a blast with that. It was really fun. Did you want to say something, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? No, no. So yeah, he was doing his Fiddler on the Roof jump. I hope everyone is doing really well today. So our topic is fun. I want to thank Amy Rogers, our subscriber, who suggested to me on Facebook that we do this crazy cool topic today called, we're, we kind of made up our own name, but she had said, hey, what about we do an episode on 10 ways to have a great cruise or 10 ways to ruin your cruise. So what I thought I would do is start off by telling you what I think are 10 ways to have a great cruise and 10 ways to ruin your cruise. But I know you guys are going to come to the party and tell us dozens more in the live chat below. So we're gonna focus all on that topic today for the first 30 minutes. And then if you have any questions, general cruising questions, things like that, we'll start answering those around 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, so halfway through the chat. So hang in there with me and let's talk about the topic of the day first. And then around 2.30, we can do some general Q&A. So a couple of things I wanna make sure you guys are fully aware of. First of all, actually, wait, wait, one quick question for you. How is everybody liking Vlogtoberfest so far? Do you like it? Is it fun? We're doing one video every single day in the month of October. We're having a blast with it. And we've had so much fun this week telling you guys a little bit more about our history and producing our vlogs and telling you why we love to cruise and all that fun stuff. So let me know how you're liking that. We are also going to be going live again on October 20th. So our next live stream, make a note of it, October 21st, Saturday, probably at noon Pacific time again. And we're going to be talking all about holiday cruising. So um, probably Halloween, Thanksgiving, um, Christmas, and New Year's Eve cruising. And so if you have some kind of special holiday expertise or you've been on a lot of holiday cruises, Christmas cruises, Thanksgiving cruises, Halloween, we want you to join in the live chat because we haven't been on a lot of those. We're gonna do some research and share what we know, but we would love to have our expert cruisers in the house on October 21st. So. Um, also, you're probably wondering who the winners are of the international giveaway. We're going to announce those on social media. So please be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. In the next few days, we're going to go ahead and do a random drawing for our two international giveaways that we started uh, last week, the two sets of mesh travel bags, I guess you could call them. So really excited to do that. So let's start off with our 10 ways to have a great cruise. And my first suggestion for everyone it starts before the cruise itself and that is you guys you've got to choose the right cruise line for you right so we're going to go ahead and link to our cruise line personality quiz in the notes below but so much of the joy that you'll get from going on a cruise really depends on whether or not you made the right selection of a line for you and hopefully during vlogtober we can do a little video on what we kind of think classifies all of these cruise lines. How would I describe princess cruises? How would I describe carnival? Maybe to help you all a little bit more with selecting um, a cruise. Of course, it's certainly possible to enjoy five, 10 or 15 different cruise lines, but choosing that right cruise line is ever so important. The next thing I think makes for a great cruise when you can do it is to fly or drive to your port the day before your cruise, right? Think about how much more relaxed you can be. If you're there the day before the cruise, you're not rushing to the port, you're not worried about your flight getting canceled. It is such a relief to have that time and that, that just sort of that stress lifted off you. Next up, 
one of my favorite things to do and recommend to new cruisers to have a great cruise is to create a sail away tradition. I think it is so much fun to have something that you and your travel companions know that you want to do when, you're, when you get on board for sail away. It could be going straight for a cocktail. It could be watching sail away from your balcony. It could be dancing with the, with the cruise ship entertainment staff on day one. It could be taking a nap. It could be going to eat. There's hundreds and hundreds of things. And we had a really fun video that we made about embarkation day tips from our subscribers. And we'll try to link to it in the description after this saves to, to um, replay because I think that's a really fun one for people to watch. And we get a lot of questions about sail away too. My number four idea is to plan your cruise well and plan appropriately but don't over plan your cruise. So what that means is do your research, have fun getting obsessed with what you're going to do on your cruise and in the ports, but be careful that you don't plan it so much that you're no longer in the moment. I think that's something that has really made a difference for me over the last few years is trying to stop over planning. I remember when I first started cruising, I would actually go onto websites and look at the menus and things like that before I cruise. Like really, I would look at every single day's menus and there's nothing wrong with doing that. But I remember thinking, I kind of wanted to have all of the information before I cruised. And there were sometimes there were no surprises left. So I think it's nice to leave a little something to surprise and to let the vacation just sort of happen. So I want to pop into the chat and see how everybody's doing today and see if anybody else has anything that they would like to say. Zachary. Yeah, what is Zachary? Way to rock your cruise. Don't skimp on free activities. Yeah. It's fun and don't be afraid to join in on the team. I like it. Zachary, you're full of good ideas today. So Zachary said, I want to find that comment and read it out loud. It looks like there's a lot going on in the chat. Okay. Zachary's way to rock your cruise says, don't skimp on free activities. They can be fun and don't be afraid to join in on the team. So that's a really good idea, Zachary. Zachary, tell us what some of your favorite free activities and team activities are on a cruise. I would love to hear that. All right, let's see here. PJ said, um, I always study the ships way more than others first. So for our next cruise, I created bingo cards with ship venues to play a game with first timers. PJ, that is so fun. So you share it with your, the people you're cruising with or with strangers. That's so cool, I love it. Tacos Rock 123 says they get egg McMuffins from McDonald's at their 24 hour McDonald's early in the morning before 6 a.m. so you don't pay an arm and a leg at the airport for food. That's so cute. I love that. And did you know, Tacos Rock, my son loves to go to McDonald's. We're on road trips too. We never go to McDonald's or anything during the normal course of our life, but he is totally conditioned that he wants a sausage McMuffin with no egg anytime we travel and we usually do it on the way to a cruise too. That's really funny. I love that. That sounds really, really good. That's a cute tradition. Awesome. Things you need to know. We're going to link to the cruise line personality test after this video saves to replay. So hang in there with us because we're going to go ahead and do that afterwards. So give us about an hour or so um, after the, after the chat ends and we'll save that for you. Yeah, Bethany said, I've definitely been struggling with a planning balance, trying not to overdo it and leave some surprises. Yeah, me too, Bethany. I'm very type A and I always um, used to overdo it a little bit too and I think I've learned that it's really nice just to kind of let things, I don't know, let things sort of unfold. And then you feel a little bit less like you're having to control things too, at least for me that's how it goes. Okay, so Zachary's following up on his last suggestion. He said, he took part in the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire quiz on NCL. You got to the, the $125,000 part until you got thrown off by a tough question. And you did the scavenger hunt and such. Yeah, those scavenger hunts look really, really fun. That is so awesome. Okay, very cool. Jessica, we're going to go ahead and hold your question until the second half of the live stream. So hang in there, okay? Wonderful. Let's see here. What else do we have? All right, PJ is following up on his comment about the bingo cards. So it started with your party, but then you have an active cruise Facebook group. Oh, that's cool. So you're expanding to first timers in there. One person reached out to John Heald and supposedly he's sending some prizes. That's awesome. I know John is really responsive about things like that. Sydney Forrester has got a good tip for you guys. Make time to relax. You are on vacay. That is so true. I love it. Okay, I want to see who, what, who else has tips in here. All right, I'm going to scroll up a little. Sorry, you guys, there's a lot of people here. And we're going to we're going to scroll up and see what everyone has to say, what your tips are for having a rock and cruise. Okay. Let's see here. Zachary said unpacking as soon as you get your bags. You hate unpacking before bed. 
So you like to you you like to get it all out. You like to get your suitcases unpacked so you feel more relaxed. Is that what you're saying? That's very cool. Okay, awesome. Any other tips in here? I'm I'm taking a look here, and then I'll go back to mine. Okay, all right. Let's go back to my list, you guys. So we left off at planning your cruise, but not over planning. So my number five tip is to make plans on shore days if and when you can afford it, especially if the port is not a place where it's great to just get out and walk around. You know how some ports are perfect for that? I would say Cabo might be, Cabo San Lucas might be a port where you could actually just get out, walk around and have a great day, maybe grab a water taxi somewhere. But then an example of a port that's maybe not so great for that would be something like Nassau or even Cozumel. Not good places just to get off and walk around. You need to have some, make some plans, set aside some cash, you guys. Set aside a little bit of money, plan a shore excursion, get out, see the land, see the people, enjoy the, in, the island or the environment that you're in. You will see so much more if you just venture away from the port. I think that's a really good lesson for people who are maybe first time cruisers. What you're, you know, what you do during the day on those port days can be so impactful in creating your memories. All right, next up, this is my husband's tip, you guys. Our number six tip today is to make the most of your daily newsletter. Take a highlighter pen in your bag. You have room for a highlighter pen in your bag. Get your whole planning party, maybe even your kids involved the night before and highlight things you wanna do the next day. If you're a new cruiser, the way that that works is when you come back from dinner at night, you're probably gonna have your, your cruise newsletter laying on your bed waiting for you and it's full of all of those dozens and dozens of activities that your cruise line has planned for you the next day. So I think it's a that's a really great idea. But again, go with the flow and know that maybe there will be some surprises that pop up too and you can't always make it. For example, on our Carnival Miracle cruise back in May, we had thought that we were we were sure that we were going to make it to the steakhouse for a fun little tasting event at like 11 a.m. one day and lo and behold, we didn't even get to breakfast until 10 a.m. and we just didn't make it. But if you're not so concerned with hitting everything on the list, you're gonna have a good time. You're gonna be able to relax into it a little bit. All right, number seven today is to be kind to the staff and crew. And I think you guys probably all know this, but when you're kind to the staff and crew, they reciprocate. They reciprocate exponentially. And if you just take a moment to remember their name, ask them how they're doing, Think about a way maybe to make their life a little bit easier that day. They appreciate it so much. Get to know them, ask about their children or not. You certainly don't have to get to know them on that level, but I think people um, definitely can enhance their crews when they get to know the staff and crew, especially your dining steward and your room steward. All right, next up, our number eight idea today is to be flexible and open-minded and roll with the punches because guess what, guys? Pretty much on every cruise, something's gonna change. Now, it may be a little change. It might be that you had to cancel your dinner plans because you came back from a shore day a little bit late, but it could be something really major, like a storm could impact your cruise. You could have bad weather. You could have changed ports and itineraries. We've had probably a minimum of five or six cruises where we've had changed ports or itineraries. That's because you are on a moving vessel that is subject to weather and natural disasters and all kinds of things and you just gotta roll with the punches and keep smiling when things change. Um, if you guys watch our vlogs, our travel vlogs, you know that something changes on almost every cruise and we always make sure that we take you right along with us to show you those changes. If you watched our catch a can vlog that we put out yesterday, you saw that we were unable to go zip lining because my son didn't meet the weight requirement. We thought we had it all figured out before the cruise, but lo and behold, it didn't work out. And we just had to adjust really quickly, keep on smiling and enjoy the moment regardless of that. So it happens. It really, really does happen. I would actually suggest that when you go into a cruise that you tell yourself to expect something major to change. It's just so much easier that way. All right. Our number, t uh, number nine tip for today is not to overdo it. Am I a good example of that? I don't know. You guys are always telling me, how the heck do you relax if you're always filming everything and you're vlogging? But I think that we have to realize you can't do it all on a vacation. So going back to that newsletter, yes, of course, you want to look at that newsletter and have as much fun as you can and do as much as you can. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just need to relax, whatever that means to you. 
to me, relaxing doesn't necessarily mean curling up on a chair by the pool and reading a book, but it might mean that I just don't do anything at all or that I sit out on my balcony and listen to the waves crashing by and, um, and do nothing at all for a little while. And I think that's part of what allows us all to unwind and lower our blood pressure, right, on vacation. So my last tip today, you guys, oh my gosh, my last tip got lost. Well, I don't have a number 10, I don't know where it went. So we're gonna call number nine our last one, and we're gonna call on you guys to create that last tip for me. Let's see, who's got a good one for me, guys? You got a good one for me? I've got a whole list, you want me to print yeah. them out for you? Print them out? Sure, print them out for me, Mr. Cruz Tips TV. I'm gonna go ahead and read some of these. Um, Catherine he um, Hebert says, take a photo of something on the ship and challenge family members or friends to be the first to find it by taking a photo of it themselves. Catherine, that's adorable. So you're creating your own scavenger hunt. That is wonderful, I love it. Starwood is speaking to my Be Flexible here and saying that um, the Princess Regal Cruise has a changed itinerary from Grand Turk to Princess Keys, but you're still glad to be cruising. Yeah, you know what, Star? I think that um, that's the key. You have to just be, you have to, if you're gonna be a cruiser, you really have to kind of be the flexible type of cruiser, right? There's really no other way. So I'm curious to hear when your cruise is though, because I think Grand Turk is actually probably recovering a little bit faster. Um, Barb Lynn says, take a nap so you can stay up later for all the evening activities. Oh my gosh. Barb, you're my kind of woman. I actually took a nap today after my garage sale because <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a good nap, right? That is such a good one. I love it. All right. Cruiser Life said on embarkation day, we always go straight to the chairs on the Lido deck, Lido deck before they get taken to watch the sail away and go explore the ship and do some sail away activities. That's awesome. So Cruiser Life, you've got like five cruise traditions. That is a lot. Okay, Ainsley Thomas has a food hack. Get two cookies and ice cream to make your own ice cream sandwich. Ainsley, now we're talking. That is such a good idea. I think that is fantastic. Good job. Very, very nice one. Okay, let's see what else. My husband's actually printing out your tips, you guys, because there were so darn many good ones that we want to share them with everyone who's going to be watching this replay in the future. So um, he will be back in a moment, but for now, I love it, Veronica. Veronica said, do Elf on the Shelf to make it festive over Christmas. So Veronica, my son has, um, sort of has the Elf on the Shelf, but we did not get the Elf on the Shelf that the children cannot touch. So we actually have a, the soft plushy kind that they sell at Target that are kind of just toys that the children are meant to interact with. So he has one that he can play with. And it turns out that over the last few years, he's collected a whole family of them. So he has his um, elf's name is Nick Dash. And um, the female, the wife in the family is called Mrs. Dash. And then they have a little baby too that's really, really cute. So I love that. That's a very good idea. Ainsley wants to know where my top is from. Ainsley, it is from Target. I just got it last weekend and it is really cute. Let me show you the back. It has really cute back detail. Hopefully you can see it. It has kind of a low back and a little tie and it was really affordable, Ainsley. Uh, definitely under $25. So go check it out at Target. They still have them. Very cool. Zachary, oh Zachary, I've heard this tip from you before and I really like it. Zachary's tip for a better cruise is to book a town car to the port if you live locally, if you can afford it. That way you aren't dealing with the stress of parking at the port. Plus it makes driving to the port less stressful. That's such a good one, Zachary. I love it. And it's not something that maybe we would think to do to spoil ourselves. All right, Sandra, I love this. Do something different every day and meet new people every day. I love that one. And you know what, what is one of the tips that I forgot to mention, Sandra? I think the reason I didn't get to number 10 is because I forgot to say that I think cruising is the best opportunity to try new foods. You've got all of these different choices, you guys. Try new foods. Do something adventuresome every day with you know your dining room food. Thank you so much. Okay, what's that? No, it's okay. My husband's like, why did I do that? That was really stressful. Okay, Bonnie Bergstein says, no cruising traditions, just go with the flow. I like that, Bonnie. That's wonderful. Ainsley said, bring emergency to avoid sickness. That's another good one. All right. Okay, yes, Ainsley, thank you. That's, that's the same tip I was just mentioning. Thank you for that. My tip is to try a new food every day. Cruising allows us to try such amazing and unique food. Yes, very good. Okay. 
Let's see, Eve, play to win. Tip number one, don't gamble on the first day. And why is that? Is that because you lose all your money? I like that. Okay, Sue G says, reserve spa days or facial on port day. You save money. That's right, Sue G, they offer port day specials. Most cruise lines, you guys will do that. So on sea days, when everybody's on the ship, of course they're gonna be heading to the spa, right? But on those port days when everyone's ashore, the spa would like to entice you to get in there and spend some money with them. So they usually offer specials. They're usually combination type specials. So where you might go to the spa and normally get a massage for $110 for an hour. The spa might offer something like a combination where you get a 20 minute facial, a 20 minute massage, and 20 minutes of hot rocks or a scalp massage for something like, um, you know, $89. Now, they're getting more and more expensive is what I'm finding, but that's a good one. Okay, you guys, Sharon C has quite possibly my favorite tip of the day. Sharon said, bring comfortable clothes. And Sharon, can I please add, bring comfortable shoes. Um, you'll, you know, that's what you're gonna end up in most of the time. It's so true, you guys. It's so true. We pack all the stuff we think is gonna look good, but when it really comes down to it, the cool, breathable cottons, the comfortable shoes that you've already worn in, those are the things that you are going to reach for. Okay, all right, let's see here. Looking for some more tips that have come in in the last few minutes. Did I'm you see the one from Amy Rogers? Amy's in the chat? Try, yeah, try to stick to your budget. Oh, Amy Rogers, who basically inspired this episode, guys, said try to stick to your budget. Yeah, that's a good one, Amy. Because you know what? If you go home in debt, what's the point, right? There is nothing wonderful about that. Okay, Stephen said, buy your first drink as soon as you board the ship. Yeah, pretty simple, Stephen, and pretty true. I like that one a lot. Okay. Let's see here. Who else do we Cruiser have? Life. Cruiser Life, did we get that one? Did don't I get? Don't be scared to go the activities alone. Okay, Cruiser Life said, don't be scared to go the activities alone. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, let's see here. We, honey, while you went to go print it off, we talked about Elf on the Shelf. Mm -hmm. I told them about Nick Dash. Fun. Yeah, isn't that cool? Okay, let's see here. Liv Moran wants to know why do we don't show our sons, our son in the video that much. Liv, just for privacy purposes, and because we want him to decide on his own when, he, when he's old enough to make that kind of a mature decision and he would like to vlog on his own or be a part of it, we will do that. But at this point, we don't want to make that decision for him. All right, let's see here. <laughs> I think there's some other good ones coming in here. Suji says... Tea time. Tea time is a nice treat. Suji says, good tip for you guys. Tea time is a nice treat. Yes, if you have tea on your cruise, enjoy it. And you know from watching our vlogs that we go to tea time all the time. On our last cruise to Alaska, did we not go to tea time two days in a row, you guys? Yes, we did. Angela Payne, this is a good one. Angela said, pack extra medicine. You don't know when your cruise will be extended. Angela, I think you might be speaking from experience. I'm sensing that. All right. All right, let's see here. I know that there are more. Lillian said, are you allowed to go around the ship with no shoes? Lillian, yes, you are allowed to go around the ship with no shoes, but I absolutely wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it's a good idea. Imagine if someone broke a glass that they had left outside with their room service tray and you stepped on it. You would ruin your cruise because you'd end up getting stitches in the infirmary and paying a few hundred dollars for it. So no, don't do that. Um, I love this. Ciara Swift says, take a Polaroid camera and have your favorite crew member sign the picture. That is so awesome. Fantastic. Okay. Got it. I know there's more coming in. I have a question if you want to get to it. Okay. From Nina Paulette. Okay, Nina she, has a question. Sure. She says, do you know if cruises that were leaving days after the Hurricane Maria from Puerto Rico are giving refunds? Um, I don't know about Puerto Rican cruises giving refunds, but I'm assuming that if your cruise was canceled, you will be getting a refund. I'm, I'd need a little bit more specifics to research that for you. I saw a tip come in that I wanted to grab. Um, I think that it was about, let's see here. Okay, Cruiser Life had a good one. Get to shows early to get good seats and then mark your seats with something or stay there. And yeah, if you're gonna do that, guys, <clears throat> If you're gonna get to the um, the theater early, you should stay in your chair though. Don't try to leave a sweater or a purse or something because they'll take it. And um, the cruise staff doesn't want you holding seats and they may remove your items. Or reserve 
Reserving seats, yeah. Richard, uh, Richard Scott said, I always try something new to eat, like escargot and souffle and meet everyone I can possibly meet. Always the friendliest people on cruises. That's so true. There really are the friendliest people on cruises. Isn't that the, isn't that the truth? Okay, Becky has a good one. Explore the ship and find those out of the way places that are less used and quiet. So when you want to get away and just chill with your love. I love that, Becky. That's a good one. Oh, this is a good one. Susan said, Take advantage of the ship app to message friends or family on board. It's better than leaving notes on doors. Yeah, that's a good idea. Susan, I've got to get better at that. I think it's partially because we don't all carry our phones all the time that we haven't been using the messaging app very much, but um, that's a good one. Ooh, Tacos Rock. Another good tip from Tacos Rock today on Carnival. Go to the steakhouse on the first night for a free bottle of wine. Yes, yes, yes. And our Carnival Miracle vlogs, that's what we did. We had my, my husband's birthday dinner on Carnival Miracle. Got a free bottle of red wine and some really good steak. All right, did we miss Megan? Oh, here's Megan. Megan Lee Ewing says, on embarkation day, we get the kids registered for the club right away. And then we take them to explore all the activities they can do. It gets them really excited and over their shyness. <clears throat> Shyness and anxiousness. That's such a good one, Megan. Thank you for sharing. Oh, Julie, you couldn't find the anchor sweater at Costco? Uh, Julie, send me a private message. Um, if I go back to Costco, I'll look for one for you in your size. Just send me a note on YouTube and I'll see what I can do. Let's see here. Okay, what other tips do we have coming in before I get to my tips about how to ruin your cruise? You guys wanna go to the dark side? Shall we go to the dark side? Let's see if we have any other positive stuff. Ooh, I'm seeing that there's people saying they buy a magnet of the ship when they're on board. I'm seeing people that they take magnets to put on their walls. Very good. Rhonda uses a whiteboard to leave messages, like a, a magnetic whiteboard. That's a good one. Okay, what else? Let's I got one from Fix I really like from okay. Mark Souther's. Okay. Find Guy's Burger. The rest of the cruise will go fine. <laughs> Mark <laughs> Souther says, find Guy's Burger. The rest of the cruise will go fine. Mr. Cruise Tubes TV, do you like Guy's Burgers? Yes. Yeah. Carnival only. Carnival only. And only some of the carnival ships. They are the bomb. Um, okay. I like Catherine's tip, and I really want to share this. When someone in a wheelchair or scooter is waiting to get on an elevator, don't stand in front of them to get on first. I know, Catherine, why can't people just be courteous? Another thing, too, you guys, that I really, and this is maybe a little preachy, but I really think I want to say it. Um, wait for people to come off the elevator before you try to get on. That's a good one. And another one, too, I, there's a lot of people who judge people who don't, who, who don't use the stairs and who maybe ha have to use the elevator for one reason or another, if someone needs to take the elevator to go up one flight of stairs, don't judge them. You know, there's probably a reason why they need to do that and let's all just be kind and nice. I've actually seen some icky judgmentalness happening on cruises and I don't think that's cool. I don't think that's cool. Zachary said, if you can't book your shows and dinners online before your cruise, do that right after you board the ship. That's a good one. Okay, great. All right, you guys, we're getting to the half an hour point, so we need to switch over to the dark side and talk about ways to ruin your cruise. I don't really want to do that. It's more fun to talk about all of this fun stuff. Okay, let's do, the, let's do the dark side. Are we ready, guys? Okay, now, as I'm going through the 10 ways to ruin your cruise, I want you to leave your ways to ruin a cruise in the chat below, and I'll try to read them out so that we can share this with the world, okay? All right. Now, my number one way to ruin your cruise is something we already mentioned in the ways to have a great cruise, and that is getting upset about a missed port, weather, or a change. If you choose to do that, that's your burden. That's you ruining your own cruise. Go into it open-minded, like we already said, and you're going to have a much better time. You're gonna spread good vibes, you're gonna spread good energy, you're not gonna sap the life out of the staff on board, and you're gonna have a better time. Number two, way to ruin your cruise is over-planning overtaxing yourself, overdoing it, expecting that you can go to bingo, line dancing, wine tasting, tea time, British tea, five shows, and the comedy all in one day is not possible. Maybe it is for some of you, but don't do it, guys. Number three, breaking the rules, fighting, throwing something overboard, being nasty to a crew member. There's a lot of different ways to get yourself in trouble, packing something forbidden on board, don't waste your energy, don't do it. Number four, way to ruin your cruise is by missing the ship in port. This might sound ridiculous, but you guys, y'all have seen pier runners. 
<laughs> on all of your cruises. You're on your balcony, you're getting ready for, ready for sail away. You look down on the pier and there are five or six people literally running for it because A, they didn't pay attention to the all aboard time or B, they drank too much and they don't care or C, there was a difference between ship time and shore time. So when in doubt, ask your room steward, go to the shore excursion desk, make sure you know your uh, shore time there. Our number five way to ruin your cruise is to not be prepared for seasickness. If you guys are prone to motion sickness, you gotta go armed. And sometimes that may mean that cruising is not for you. I have a few very dear friends who have tried to cruise and were literally miserable the whole time, and that's okay. We can get you into an all-inclusive resort. You don't have to go on a cruise, but you gotta pack the ginger chews, you gotta pack the wristbands, the anti-nausea medications, and some of the cool new products that are available out there like the relief band, because there's nothing worse than being seasick on a cruise. All right, number six is booking excursions at the last minute. So sometimes booking an excursion at the last minute can be fine. Maybe you have a spontaneous opportunity to do something cool, but if you wait to book your excursions until the last minute, you might be disappointed. You may not get what you want. You may end up in an excursion that was overpriced and not what you really enjoy. Number seven, getting stuck at a bad table in the dining room. I think my husband came up with this one, didn't you? Wasn't that yours? Sounds like me. You sounds like you. Getting stuck at a bad dining room table. Let's talk about what that could mean. A bad dining room table might be you're seated with other people and you didn't want to be. You're seated with other people and they are in some way offensive or obnoxious to you. You are seated right next to the galley and it's noisy and obnoxious. Don't let it ruin your cruise. Go to the maitre d' on night one and kindly ask them to be reassigned. You can do it. It'll happen. Most likely, they're gonna do everything they can to make you happy, guys. All right, number eight, I know I'm pale and fair-skinned, but don't get sunburned on your cruise. That's popular in there right now. Everyone's, Everyone's talking about sunburn? Mm -hmm. I'm not in the chat right now, but it's so true, you guys. You gotta pack sunscreen. Chances are, if you're going to the Caribbean or somewhere warm and sunny, you're exposing more skin, you're out in the sun more than you are in your normal daily life, and you just gotta do it. All right, number nine today. Yeah, I don't. I just don't have it pulled up right now. I'll bring it back. Number nine is blowing it in the packing department, making packing mistakes. Well, nobody's a perfect packer. I usually blow something on every cruise, but you really need to think about several different factors. Number one, obviously, think about the weather where you're going. Number two, you got to think about comfort. You guys, like Sharon said a little bit earlier, being comfortable on your cruise is key. It's, it's, I know it's form over function sometimes with things, but I really think it's a good idea to do your very, very darndest to try to pack comfortable clothing. That doesn't mean you can't take something new, but if you're going to a warm destination or the Caribbean, focus on cotton clothes and things like that. Okay, you guys are gonna answer the rest. Are we ready? All right, let's see what everybody else is having to say. I am now in the live chat. Jim Burke says, don't over drink and spend the next day hungover. Yeah, I can't imagine a worse thing to do to ruin an entire day of my cruise because I overdrank. That's a good one. All right, let's see here. Amber said that they were seated on, a, they were on a, her mom was on a cruise a few years ago where they were seated with a really rude drunk and had to be asked to be seated somewhere else. And yeah, I'm glad that they did. That is a good thing. <laughs> Susan said the same thing happened to them. They were, they were seated with a family that no one could make happy. You just hope they didn't show up to dinner. Yeah, that whole my main dining room thing can be a really big problem. Okay, let's see what everybody else has to say. I'm scrolling up so we can start from the beginning. Okay, I might have to have you help me out. <laughs> Thanks for going to the, uh, the dark side with me, guys. I know it's not the most pleasant, but I think we need to, we need to talk about it. You don't want to be a Grinch, right? <laughs> okay, oh my gosh. Paula said, don't judge people. That's so true. Halsey Roberts said, a bad attitude is enough to ruin any vacation. When I went to Jamaica, a woman had a total meltdown at the breakfast buffet, buffet because they didn't have any bacon that day. Oh my gosh, Halsey. Yeah, exactly. People can be super entitled. That's not good. All right. Let's see. Chris uh, Ryland says, forgetting your swimsuit. Chris Ryland said, party foul. Don't forget your swimsuit. It's so true, Chris. You need your swimsuit. That's right. Roberto said it's pretty critical to sail with the right group. The worst feeling on a cruise is not being able to do what you want because you have the other group members like being forced to go to the beach when you want a zip line. 
Yes, Roberto, that's so true. Okay, I know that I see that um, Amber has a question. I'm sorry that we've been taking longer to get to questions today, Amber. We kind of had a, a big topic. Amber wants to know, what are the pros and cons of having a stateroom in the front, middle, and back of the ship? Oh boy, Amber, we could create a whole episode on this. Okay, so let me see if I can try to sum this up for you quickly, Amber. Um, the front of the ship is usually the cheapest place to book a cabin because there are fewer things that are close to the front of the ship. However, I find that the front of the ship is also more quiet. On the, da on the dark side, on the dark side. Um, on the other hand, let's just put it that way. Being at the front of the ship, you will feel more motion. You may feel more of the up and down as it goes over the waves. Some of the roughest ships we've, uh, excuse me, cruises we've ever been on, we've been at the very front of the ship and literally felt kind of a pounding sensation on rough cruises like to the Mexican Riviera. Midship is most convenient and close to other things. However, I never book midship. I don't like the crowds. I don't like all the people walking around by the elevators. However, on the other side, it's also the most stable part of the ship. The back of the ship is close generally sometimes to things like the buffet and the main dining room. However, there may be on older ships more vibration on the back of the ship. And of course you have to walk further distances. If you book your cabin at the very front or the very back, you're gonna have to walk longer to get to most of, most of the, the popular venues on a ship like dining rooms, the atrium, the shops. Most of those things are towards the center of a ship. So if you book front or back, you're gonna be moving towards the center and walking more. But with that said, I will tell you my opinion. My opinion is that I never book midship. First of all, the cabins are more expensive because they are deemed to be more desirable. But in my opinion, they're just not. Um, I don't mind the walking. I like a little more solitude and that's how we roll. So thank you for being patient, Amber, as we did that. All right, let's get back in there. Okay, Recon 1A says the number one way to ruin your cruise, not having your phone in airplane mode. That can cost you a lot of money and you might not know until you get back home. Two thumbs up. Excellent. Very, very good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and find some more here. I know there's tons more. Joshua said, don't talk politics or religion at dinner. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Please don't, don't talk anything controversial at dinner. Um, oh, Elias says, don't try and control your teenagers too much on the ship. You will end up with a grumpy teenager and a load of frustration. It's not horrible if they wander. Elias, I so agree with you. That is one of the reasons why I think cruise vacations are so appealing is that they do feel safe and contained for, for teens and children when they are appropriately behaved and supervised and not left to just go nuts on the ship, right? That's, I'm sure your kids aren't like that or a responsible parent like you wouldn't be hanging out here, most likely, would be hanging out here, sorry. <laughs> Irresponsible parent, maybe not. But yeah, I mean, you know, if they're well behaved, they should be able to roam, I totally agree. All right, okay. I have a couple of questions about tables. Okay, I'm ready for questions about First tables. From Krish. Okay. Do families get seated with extra people? Krish wants to know if families get seated with extra people. Krish, it totally depends. If you request a private table, you might get one. If you request a private table, you might not get one. If you request a large table, you might get one, you might not. It's all up in the air sometimes with cruise lines, you guys. Usually when you fill out your cruise personalizer, you request a certain type of table. Then when you get on the ship, it may or may not be exactly what you want. The important thing to know, Krish, is you can ask the maitre d' to change it. So you have to, it depends on the cruise line, it depends on what dining room you're in. You may or may not be seated with other people. I'm ready for the next one. Very similar from okay. Megan. Megan. Megan's Buck. Megan's Buck. We are leaving in December for our honeymoon. Will they let us sit alone for dinner? Yes, Megan, they'll probably let you sit alone. Make sure that you request a table for two when you fill out your cruise personalizer. And then on day one of most cruises, I don't know which, which line you're going on, Carnival Princess Hall in America usually have office hours at the main dining room on embarkation day. Now, it's gonna pull you away from the pool fun and all that embarkation day fun, but go to the dining room and tell the maitre d', hey, I'm on my honeymoon, can I have a table for two? And they'll probably honor it for you. And if they can't honor it on the first night, that is normal. They may say, okay, we're gonna do what we can, Megan. Night one, you can, you can sit at the table we've assigned you to, or you can go to the buffet or the specialty restaurant. But tomorrow we're gonna try to honor your request. That's totally normal, not a problem. Okay, um, Chris Ryland, walkie-talkie pros and cons. 
Pros, if they work, they work and they're really fun. Um, cons, they take up more room in your suitcase. Sometimes they don't work because of distance and um, sometimes it's annoying to other passengers to be going like, Shh, Chris, where are you right now? Chris, Shh, I'm down on deck 14 and I got a sail away party going. What do you guys want to do? It's annoying. Don't be obnoxious. So, sorry. Yes. If they want a good laugh, search for our episode on it. Oh, Chris, my husband said, if you want a good laugh, search for our episode on walkie talkies because it's old and it's really funny. And we did this funny split screen thing where I was on both sides of the screen, but I was doing pros and cons of walkie talkies. Maybe just maybe we should link to it in this one. I don't know if really know if I want you guys to see that episode. It goes back to one of the early embarrassing ones, but it's pretty fun, Chris. You can watch it. All right. CB, is there a cruise personalizer on NCL? Yes. All of them have sort of a pre-cruise place to go register, note your preferences, make reservations, things like that. It'll be there for you. But I can't remember right now what it's called. Okay. Ainsley said, would you be able to do a California video? You're going on a 10-day Princess California cruise in May. Ainsley, I don't think we're going to be able to get to that. I haven't done a California coastal cruise because I live in California. So if you have some questions about it, I would love for you to email me or message me so I can help you personally because I... I think we might be able to help you more because we live here than because we've cruised here. I hope that that helps. Are yeah. stopping in Santa Barbara? I don't, I don't know. know oh, we have a Santa Barbara video. We have things to do in Santa Barbara. And in the Cruise Dudes um, Sea Wind Mag, we wrote a huge article on things to do in Santa Barbara. So I can help you with that. I can help you with San Francisco, San Diego, Monterey, Long Beach, whatever you need. Just email me. Okay, Halsey Roberts said, and the old Sherry telling people not to eat before bed. You guys, Halsey must have been around for a while because you remember our video about how to, um, it was our sleep tips video and I, <laughs> we did another split screen thing where I was an old woman pretending to bark out tips at people and it was actually, I thought that one was kind of funny, Halsey. I, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of funny. I liked it. So anyway, I feel like you guys, I might be, missing some questions today because we've had a very, very busy live chat. But I definitely want to make sure that I read some of the comments about what can ruin people's cruise. So let me get to a couple of those real quick and then I promise to answer questions. Um, let's see, Amber said, if it were me, the worst thing to do on a cruise is to go out in the hallway at night. I don't want an untro... Oh, I think you're safe with the crew there, Amber. I don't think that's a very common thing. Um, I'd be a lot more worried about the passengers, to be quite honest with you. Um, let's see here. There's so many, you guys. Why don't you, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, give me, some, give me some questions and some tips here. I'm ready. Sorry, I was... I was you, did you find a fun one? Okay. You got any for me? You just searching? I mean, I'll take a minute, so you should look in the chat. Okay, sounds really good. Okay, great. Um... Pain Pavy 33, I have not tried the chef's table on Carnival, but I've seen it. And I've heard from people who I cruised with that it was wonderful, but our little son is a little bit too small for that. So we haven't done it yet, but I've heard it's amazing. And Jim Burke is agreeing. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, you guys, there's so many great things coming in. Shannon Gorman wants to know if a 64 SD size card is enough for a cruise. Uh, there's never enough memory for a cruise. You guys, we blew it in Alaska and had to buy more memory. Me and Mr. Cruise Tips TV, who thought we had this down, literally had to buy memory twice, partially because we were doing video. If, if, yeah, the video is what kills yeah. me. And we're, we're doing 4K video too, so okay. there are a lot of variables, but I would, mm -hmm. I would double that 64. Double that, double take, that. Take two 64s or Okay, two 64s is. is the final answer from Mr. Cruise Tips TV. Alyssa Ward Dance wants to know. Do you think it's important to buy a soda pass? Alyssa, if you drink more than four sodas a day, that's our rule. Our general rule is to buy one if you're a big soda drinker. Um, just know that depending on the cruise line, you may not be able to get soda out of a can and the bar Coke can be gross. Um, I'm, uh, it's such an irritating thing for me. We need to do an episode on things we wish cruise lines would change. You know we love cruising, but that is one of them. Please, if I have a soda card, give me a can if I want it. Don't make me drink gross bar coke. Yucky. Um, flat. All right. 
Um, Andy Porter wants to know what cruise lines sail out of San Francisco. Andy, maybe mainly Princess to Mexican Riviera and Alaska. Watch our Grand Princess vlogs. We just did one of those. It was awesome. Okay. Um, I see a lot of questions coming in. Margie said, for your Panama Canal cruise, are you doing a full or partial transit? Margie, we are doing a 10-night partial transit round trip for Lauderdale. Christelle said, I have a feeling rain is about to ruin our cruise. We leave tomorrow from Galveston to Cozumel, Belize, and Honduras. Christelle, nothing is going to ruin your cruise. You're going to have a wonderful time. You can still go to those Caribbean ports, and if it's raining, it will be warm. You can have fun. You can go to the beach in the rain. Don't let it ruin your cruise. Pack some extra clothes and a good attitude, and don't worry. It's going to be fine. All right, Zachary has an uncomfortable tip but a necessary tip. This is cute, Zachary. Bring poo-pourri because those bathrooms can stink up. That's really funny. Zachary, I've never bought poo-pourri, but I think it's really funny. I've got, to, I've got to try that sometime. Okay, here's a good one coming in. Question from Tom, to avoid ruining your cruise, how close to leaving for one should you take shots if necessary? Say, visiting a foreign country. Tom, first of all, check with your doctor because you may be surprised that shots, vaccinations, whatever you want to call them, are not necessary. But your doctor will put you on a schedule uh, because each of the vaccinations does have a different timeline. So I can't answer that for you because some of them may be two, four, six weeks and the doctor will know best. Um, an internal medicine doctor, a general practitioner, they should all have access to the database that shows which vaccinations you need. Cruising with wheels, I like what you have to say here. Nothing ruins a cruise except a canceled cruise. Yeah. I totally agree. Hi, Frank and Kevin. Nice to see you today. Um, let's see here. Okay, Crystal Kong says, if one, if one of my excursions is only one hour, am I able to go to the beach for free and lounge around before boarding the ship? Crystal, I don't know where you're going, but probably. Um, you can message me if you need more questions. Okay, Paula said, to ruin your cruise, not being kind and considerate of other people. There will be crowds and lines. Make the best of it. Vexia Marionette says, which cruise lines have formal nights? I heard Royal Caribbean no longer does. I haven't heard that, Vexia. I think most of the cruise lines still have formal nights, but Norwegian has um, formal or not, dress up or not nights where it's more relaxed. But I do believe that on um, Royal Caribbean, you have the option to go to other venues if you are not interested. Okay, Joshua Larson said, how far out should you get your passport? As far out as you realize you're going on that cruise, get it. Six months early, do it whenever. I've had a bad experience with booking a passport late. I got it in time, but it was stressful and I had to pay more. Zuzel Junko said, do you think Cozumel is safe for excursions? Yes, absolutely. I have no reason to be concerned there. Um, Busy Mama Parano says, anyone else book with Carnival last week for the discounted deposits? I didn't, but um, that's a great tip. Thank you very much. Shannon said, um, get flu shots a few weeks in advance. Very cool. Hi, Bessie. Congratulations on making your first live stream. We're glad to have you here. I see ya. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to kind of scroll up and see what else I can find. Finally able to catch up a little bit. Guys, we have 10 more minutes. If we've missed your question, please be sure to ask it now. I know that we really didn't focus on questions for the first little bit because we were talking about our um, 10 ways to have a rockin' or ruined cruise. All right. Ainsley said, what cruises do you guys have booked for 2018? The only cruise we have booked for 2018, Ainsley, is our Norwegian Bliss cruise to the Mexican Riviera in the fall of 2018. So we're, hopefully we'll be able to do a few more cruises right now. We did a lot of cruises this year and sometimes we alternate a little bit. We'll do a lot of cruises one year and then kind of recover a little bit financially the next year. And that's kind of where we are right now is we'll see because we're going to the Panama Canal and we had to fly to that cruise. So we had to spend a lot more money to get to the, to the port of Fort Lauderdale. So I'm not sure if we're going to be doing anything else before October of next year, but I certainly hope so. Okay. All right. I like John's tip here, how to ruin your cruise. Stay off your phone. No need to browse social media on a cruise. You can do that at home. Yeah, John, that's a good way to relax. I certainly keep it to a minimum. I usually... If I have free internet through Princess or something like that, I'll usually use a little bit of it, but I try to avoid it because how often in life do we get to do that, right? So true. Okay, Krish said tip not doing enough research is a way to blow your first cruise. Yeah, you really, you've got to find that balance between not over planning and, and planning well. All right, Barb says they hang a car air freshener in the stateroom bathroom coconut fragrance. That's so clever. Zachary said, 
If you only use your balcony for putting sunscreen on when entering and leaving port, book an inside or ocean view and use the money on drink package or excursion. That's a good one, Zachary. I like that. Anybody have any ideas for Rhonda for Costa Maya? All right. Megan has a good tip. Okay, Megan's tip. Let's go, Megan. Um, make sure you have at least six months left on your passport. Oh, yeah. You could be denied entrance to some ports. Mm -hmm. Megan said, "If you make sure you have six months left on your passport, folks, you could be died, den denied, denied entrance to some ports. Very cool. Um, Ainsley said, tip, really plan out where you want to be on the ship. You've been under the Lido pool and it was impossible to sleep. That sounds like a nightmare, Ainsley. That's a really good tip. Hi, Mike and Cheryl, you guys back? <laughs> okay, let's see. Um... Tacos Rock has another great tip. They said, this is kind of obvious, but be careful hanging clothes over the balcony to air dry. They may end up getting soaked, ironically, or blowing off onto the floor or blowing over the balcony, right? Very cool. Um, okay, sounds good. Bessie said, we waited too long to get our passports and had to rush them and get them to get, yeah, $300 for two passports. That can happen. Very true. Catherine Hebert said, put your ID both inside and outside of your luggage. You guys have the best tips. This is so good, all of this content. I love it, you're amazing. This is just amazing. I'm so excited. Yeah, very awesome. Oh, Dave WLTN said, what's the best family cruise besides Disney? You have a five, four, and one-year-old. Dave, we get this question a lot, and I would tell you that it really depends. So there's a lot of factors, but probably the top three for you guys are gonna be either Carnival, Royal Caribbean, or Norwegian for the kids. Um, it depends on where you live, what your budget is, and what you're looking for in a cruise line. With the littler kids, I might say, oh my gosh, it's a really hard one because I really think Royal Caribbean is great for teenagers, but then they have a lot to offer for children, little tiny children as well. And Norwegian's freestyle cruising lends very well to families who kind of want to do their own thing. And Carnival really just has fantastic kids programs. So, there is a lot of thinking to be done there. If you want to send me a private message, I can try to help you out a little bit more and get to know your family and see what we could do to figure that out. Okay. All right. Shannon has a great tip, guys. Bring a medical printout. Power of attorney. List your medical conditions. That's a very good idea. Thank you. All right. Okay. Mike in Jersey said, we like to board the ship as early as possible to enjoy food, drinks, and hot tubs before everything gets busy. So do we, Mike in Jersey. Yes, yes, yes. Very cool. Okay. Let's find out what Jacob wants. He says, I'm a new travel expert agent. How can I get my message out? Mm -hmm. I'm an individual, not a oh, company. Jacob Tawney, you are a new travel agent or expert. How can you get your message out? Jacob, you can definitely be responding in the chat here. You're also welcome to send me a message here on YouTube with your contact information, your Facebook page, your phone number, your email, or whatever. When people ask for travel agent recommendations, we can let them know. But I think the best thing you can do is come and participate in these chats and help to answer people's questions about cruises and let them know you're a travel agent. We have no problem with that. We love travel agents here at Cruise Tips TV, and we completely support working with one um, and if you're someone who has a great response time and a knowledge of cruises and you love working with people let them know you're here that's perfectly fine with me okay Dave said suggestion on a young family cruise so Dave hopefully I kind of answered your question a little earlier but let's see if anybody else has anything Zachary said another tip try a new cabin for the heck of it if you always get one type of cabin mixed up that's a really nice idea I think that has something to do too with kind of just you know, realizing that cruises, cruising is about doing different things and trying to mix it up where you can. Okay. Um, Amber, Angela Hardy said, sneaking forbidden items is a bad idea. That's probably a good tip. Maybe we're responding to something else that I kind of missed there. Okay, great. Oh, Veronica, I'm so glad that this time works good for Australia. You know, I sort of thought about that, um, that it might be a little bit better than noon hour time, two more hours ahead. So we'll try to mix it up a little bit. And we're going to do some more live streams sometime in the next week, you guys. There will be a midweek live stream coming soon. Not sure when yet, though, um, but I'll keep you guys posted on social media. So for those of you who aren't already following us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, you got to get over there and follow us because we put a lot of updates there. Okay, Pauline has a suggestion for the travel agent. Get your name out at local events and through your Facebook page. Oh yeah, the Facebook page is the way to go. 
if you're a new TA, you've got to have a Facebook page. That's such a wonderful idea. Juanita said, in response to Elizabeth's question, there are tons of activities in Jamaica and Cayman. Duns River Falls is always popular in Jamaica. Cayman is known for their snorkeling and diving and also Seven Mile Beach, guys. Very cool. All right, so Chris is saying that Royal Caribbean has the best teen program. I would agree with that. I think that's a very, very safe bet. Sue G said it's really critical to have travel insurance. That's a really good one, Sue. Why didn't I think about that? Way to ruin your cruise. Don't buy travel insurance. Excellent. Okay, bye, Shannon. You have a good one. Don't worry about ducking out early. We're always happy to have you. Okay, Amber said, learn how to defend yourself before the cruise. It's not a bad idea to be safe. I agree, Amber. You always got to be... You always got to be thinking ahead. Okay. All right, you guys, we're going to start wrapping up here in just a moment. So how's everybody liking Vlogtoberfest? Leave me a comment real quick. Let me know how you're liking it. What's been your favorite part of Vlogtoberfest so far? Let me know in the comments below. Um, also, just a reminder in the housekeeping items, our next live stream is two weeks from today. It's going to be on um, Saturday, October 21st most likely at noon Pacific time. Sorry for those of you in Australia. I know that's kind of a bad time, but please join us to talk about holiday cruising. And if you're a holiday cruising expert, we would love to see you here. We're still taking suggestions for topics for Vlogtoberfest, but we're pretty full in the way of suggestions. So if I do not get to your suggestion in the month of October, please forgive me. We'll try to do a video another day. So let's see what else. Okay, Mike and Cheryl want to know if there are any updates on the Caribbean ports. No, guys, I'm not seeing a lot coming out. I'm not hearing who is reopening. I'm not sure what's going on with Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, St. Martin. I'm just not sure. Okay, let's see here. I, I we can answer this one because I, just because I like the username. It's yeah. Shy cupcake. Shy Cupcake. Do you have any suggestions for activities for a young adult? Um, Shy Cupcake said, do you have any suggestions for activities for a young adult? You betcha. There's so many. Well, Zachary gave some great ones today. Go on the treasure hunt. Look at that newsletter and plan different activities. There's so many different things. There's meet and greets for young adults. The Sail Away Party is a really good place to start Shy Cupcake because you can meet people on day one and kind of get a vibe for who's on the ship and what is going on. And then just really look at that newsletter. Go to the shows at night and meet and mingle with people. Um, it sounds like you're, old, you're too old to be part of the teen club or anything like that. So I think you want to just get out of your room and go and interact with people. If anybody else has any ideas, please do let me know. All right, you guys. So I want to. I'm gonna read off what some of you are saying about Vlogtoberfest. Suji liked the hummingbirds. Thank you, Sue. That was really fun. I I couldn't believe how noisy they they were that day. It was crazy. Bonnie said, "Love seeing you every day." Thank you, Bonnie. We really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well down there in Florida. Um, Pauline said she loved the little man Cam and catch a can. Yeah, his his freshly squeezed orange juice drink of the day was really cute, wasn't it? Um, Veronica, our little guy, the, the kids club on Princess was beautiful, but our son didn't use it. He's just not quite there yet. Um, first time cruiser, Sean Daniels, weather in Nassau, first of December should be ideal. Sunny, warm, maybe some rain in the afternoon, but you should be fine. All right. Um, let's see here. Who else has some comments for us? Um, so update on the Caribbean. Pam H said, Princess just announced they are not going to St. Thomas in November, they're going to St. Croix instead. Oh, that's nice. I wouldn't complain too much about St. Croix. That sounds great. CB said Vlogtoberfest is feeding your cruise research addiction. Margie in Texas says Vlogtoberfest is fun. Watching vlogs daily leading up to your first cruise. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. All right, you guys. So we're getting ready to wrap up. Did we miss your question? Please let me know. Nina, thank you for loving the bear clips. We loved them too. We had so much so much footage from the bear clips that um, we couldn't even show it all. And is it okay if I share with them why yeah. a little bit? Okay, so you guys, I want to talk to you about the bear thing. In our Ketchikan vlog, this is kind of weird, but when we were filming the bears, my husband's new camera has a really good zoom feature. Well, the bear footage is kind of graphic. So when the bears would take a salmon and bring it up underneath our viewing deck, and have their way with the salmon, it was really hard to watch when you looked at it zoomed in close up because the salmon would um, 
you know, kind of... Be alive. It, the salmon was still alive through the process. And it was like gulping for air. And it was just really hard to watch. So we actually omitted some of the bear footage. I'm gonna post a little a bit of, of a little a clip. Yeah, a lot of it, my husband said. We're gonna post a few clips on, um, I think probably on Instagram and maybe Facebook of some of that graphic stuff. And I'll put a note on there that says it's graphic. But we actually found it kind of disturbing because the, you know, the fish was just so still alive while all this was happening. It was really hard to watch. And we know that many kids watch this channel and we really didn't want to risk upsetting anyone. So just a little note about the bears. All right, guys, we're wrapping it up today. Thank you so very much for joining us. Um, we love the fact that there's so many of you from all over the world, and we love the fact that there's so many of you who return week after week to be here with us. So we'll see you all on the 21st. We'll see you every day for Vlogtoberfest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next time, guys, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye. Who's your own three? <laughs>